it's a pleasure to be here, and I only, I'm sorry that I had to come so late. It was not my fault. I was supposed to be here on Saturday. My, I ended up arriving here two days later. It must be a world record of, uh, I spent uh, two days between airports and lousy hotels and things like that. So, that has had some consequence here because I couldn't really uh, synchronize what I'm going to talk about with the other speakers that, that are going to discuss metadynamics. They will do in greater depth than I, I'm going to do now. Uh, but, uh, I, for my talk, I need to give you some idea of what it's all about so that you can follow. And then you have to sort of, uh, if you want to get deeper into the subject, just wait for Giovanni Massimiliano to to do a more uh, uh, didactical presentation. Okay, so let's uh, with this uh, with this introduction, let's go. Let's go. Where do we go? Nowhere. <laughs> oh, I it's upside down. I. Uh, Yes, it was. Uh, okay, uh, uh, I mean, th this is a protein, uh, uh, a kinase, uh, which uh, we worked, uh, we have been working on a few days, a few years back, uh, with uh, Anna Bertiotti, it was the thesis work of Anna. And uh, the, the reason why I show this, uh, these things, uh, it shows what kind of large movement uh, take place uh, in a protein. So this is, there is a particular loop, the green loop here, uh, which is going to go. This is the enzymatic center, and the loop uh, is moving from an open position to a closed position, uh, blocking access uh, to, uh, to the enzymatic center. Um, so this is a bit in contrast uh, with the, with the, the old, 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 uh, all, all, all the approach or all the ideas that they come from X-ray and then MR, especially X-ray, which look at protein as static structure. In fact, proteins have a very substantial dynamics. We'll have several examples of that, and this dynamic is crucial for the function. So, uh, understanding this movement is an important task for us molecular dynamic simulators because experimentalists have a hard time to study this phenomenon in detail, if it could be of great, uh, great help. But, but, uh, 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 there is a problem. And there is a problem of, that's uh, Max, uh, I should write here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know whether you want me to write it. Oh, no. Sorry, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, so, uh, there's a problem of time scale. If you do, <laughs> You're a practitioner of molecular dynamics, so you know that there's a time scale over which it's very difficult to carry your calculations. I would say nowadays, typically, unless you're a wealthy businessman, then time scale of microseconds is what what one can, with some effort, reach. If you want to go beyond that, that uh, the time scale, then you cannot do with the with the uh, sheer uh, uh, computer power, and uh, and that puts you in a, in a in a in a position of difficulty because many of these ch uh, structural changes of protein take place uh, on a time scale which is uh, from milliseconds onwards. I mean, millisecond, micro second, and so on and so forth. So how how and how are we going to bridge this this gap? First, we have to see why. Uh, where does, does this gap uh, come from? And, and I have written here uh, two motivations to to cause of, uh, of this uh, time scale problem. One is as uh, shown here. We, we see the turtle uh, merrily going across the screen, and and, and uh, so some things that do really take a long time. Takes time for things to be fused from one part to the other, so that's uh, something intrinsic and very rather challenging to to uh, to discuss. I mean to uh, to solve. 
move uh, the other is to do with the presence uh, of a uh, uh, barrier. Uh, so you start your simulation here, and then if there is a very large barrier, you will remain in this minimum and never go into the other minimum B. And that is because the probability of going from A to B is exponential in the height of the barrier, as we know from transition state theory. And in principle, if we know the position of this place, the height of the barrier, then we can use the transition state theory and calculate the rate. But uh, uh, can we do that uh, for protein? Huh? In, in many quantum systems, simple reactions that was uh, uh, very, very nicely. Can we do that? Uh, well, uh, uh, for protein, this is a cartoon which has been produced by uh, De Lago, Chris De Lago, which is sort of an imaginary uh, Mickey Mouse representation of uh, the surface potential energy of, of, of a complex system. Uh, which is characterized by many, many uh, times. Of course, the real potential energy surface is, it is uh, in the 3n uh, uh, space, so we can't uh, represent it. We have to, to, to sort of uh, get uh, a, 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 an idea in this form. So, but basically this picture was shows what are the characters of this, uh, of a highly complex uh, uh, potential energy surface. One is the presence of multi-scale. The, this, this, this surface is corrugated on, on different, uh, uh, land scales. There are different, uh, metastable states, say, to conformation of the protein. And you, you can go from one, uh, minimum to the other in different ways. Huh? You can go this way or that way. And uh, the other aspect, there is no, no clear transition state. Uh, what is the saddle point here? There are millions of saddle points. How are we going to use transition state under these circumstances? So, uh, in, in, in corresponding to this, oops, oh, I have to get used. And, and, and uh, okay, so this is one an important reason for, 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 uh, of, time. of course, oh, we don't make too far. Of course, we are not the first one to worry about that. And uh, there have been uh, many attempts at uh, solving this problem, some of which you have, uh, you have heard about, uh, and others probably will learn about uh, in the coming days. Uh, uh, so the different forms of enhanced sampling, uh, parallel tempering, understand is something that you heard about, uh, simulated tempering and so on, so things, then there are trajectory bias method, uh, you're trying to really find the ensemble of trajectory that go from A to B, so rather than looking at the whole potential surface, you, 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 uh, try to find the act of transition between one minimum and the other. The, the final uh, class of method is based on bias potential. Again, you know about umbrella sampling. The idea is to construct, uh, build a potential that uh, compensates uh, all the asperities that are in this potential and it's uh, flattening it uh, and making so that, uh, that, uh, that uh, it makes it easy uh, to go from one minimum to the other. Uh, the particular variant of this method, which I've been working on for the last uh, decade, uh, is called uh, metadynamics. It will be the focus of our, uh, our, our lectures. Uh, <coughs> metadynamics, uh, uh, the philosophy of metadynamics, uh, it, it, it is uh, twofold. You, wish, you want to on one end, solve the technical problem of going from one minimum to the other. Going from, you want to have a simulation method where you start from one conformation of the protein and the system magically and in affordable computer time takes you from A to B and gives you the right statistical distribution of this conformation. 
that's your objective, one of the objectives. But I think the, the other objective is to bring the down of this complexity of the system, which is done, is made of 3n degrees of freedom, bring down to a level in which you can understand, you can elaborate a theory, understand what goes on, why the system goes from A to B the way it does, because that's really what will going to enhance your understanding of the problem. Okay, so, and uh, the, the, what I find appealing in our, in our approach is that the two things are, are combined together. On one end, you, at the same time, you, you, you learn about the system and also uh, solve the technical problem of exploring this complex uh, free energy surface. How we do that? We do, uh, I will briefly, be, otherwise, uh, we, uh, we cannot follow. I mean, I said the details, the, uh, the proper didactical explanation will come later, uh, not from me. Uh, and uh, so, first, if we try to find out <coughs> a small set of collective variables, which I, I say I've been told that the concept which you have been exposed to, and I will not uh, repeat anything there. And the other thing is, of course, we focus on the free energy surface rather than the potential energy surface. What is uh, this uh, free energy surface? Okay, it's a simple definition. So suppose you know my collective variables, I can look uh, for the probability distribution that uh, this collective variable has a certain value. This is given by the Boltzmann distribution, probably normalized. And if I take the log of this, I, I put the minus in front, I multiply by the uh, energy scale of the problem, which is uh, kVt, and I take the log, this is our free energy. So that, uh, uh, free energy contains a bit of enthalpic nature, and of course uh, contains a part of entropic nature. So it's a combination of the two things, and which is really what drives the system. If you, if you look at P of S, this probability distribution, will have, if you have several metastable states, this will have a, a probability in certain position in space, so, so uh, maxima in P of S, because of this definition, will become minima in the free energy surface. So, if you look at the, if you have chosen well your collective variable, if you look at the free energy surface and its minima and its values and its pathways, you can learn, uh, can learn a lot about the system. Although, mind you, you don't have any real dynamics. That's, that's the price you have to pay with this man. If you want dynamics, you have to do complicated things, some manipulation afterwards. But uh, that uh, would be, will not be dealt with, that is least not by me in this talk. Okay, so how are these uh, free energy surfaces? We said, may always have this, uh, this classic, exam classic example, valanine dipeptide. So this is a tiny peptide, which has different conformers. Uh, these conformers uh, depend on these two torsional angles, phi and psi. And I can plot the, this like, simple calculation. I can uh, uh, run it and run it uh, without any fear, get uh, or breaking uh, your computer time. You can find the free energy surface. And you see that's a typical thing. So there is a a main minimum here in terms of these two Ramachin, Ramachandran atoms, which correspond to <coughs> one conformer. And then if we go along this way, so this is the valley, and we go right over the mountain pass, we end up in a shallow minimum, which corresponds to another metastable state, uh, and the conformation will be, uh, the, the molecule will typically oscillate, between this state and the other state. And by looking at the depth of this well, you can get the probability distribution, the, the relative uh, population of the two conformers. Okay. 
but this is only yes so this is just to give you an idea how this free energy surface look like and how 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 you can uh, you can uh, learn from them uh, the uh, the issue still remains to be solved. I mean, if I do my molecular dynamics and I start the state A, huh, since there is a, a barrier, the system will remain trapped in this minimum. And unless I invest a lot of computer time, which in this case I can do, but in general it's prohibitive, the system will never go over there. So I need a, a way of thinking about the system and letting the system go from here to there without losing track of the right uh, probability distribution because uh, if you generate conformation at random we'll never get to the right Boltzmann distribution, we'll not get to the right result. Okay, so this I will skip since you know what these collective variables are. Uh, so what we do it, uh, as I said, it's 10 years uh, old uh, work. And so the, the first time we did it is uh, with Sandro Laio. And the idea is very simple. And uh, so suppose this is your free energy surface. Huh? And then uh, uh, you move uh, uh, in this free energy surface. So if you let the system evolve spontaneously, we'll try to minimize the free energy surface. And so we'll move it towards the minimum. And if I want to move from minimum, so if I do things, let things spontaneously, I will have fluctuations and then the, the free energy will bring me back. So I have to counteract this effect. And what I do is I add uh, a Gaussian potential, a repulsive Gaussian potential. So wherever I go, I leave behind me a trail of Gaussians, which uh, like in the famous fable, huh? I don't know how you say it in English, Polichina. Yeah, okay? I don't know the English name. What is it? Uh, yeah, Hansel and Gretel is one. Okay, there is another variant. Uh, yeah. Okay, you leave behind uh, all this, uh, all this Gaussian, the past Gaussian, and they will, uh, will, uh, how do I do? I hope you do. So, this is what happens. Adding Gaussians uh, over Gaussians. And this is going to fill the well. Let my system explore the different local minima and eventually find the absolute minimum. And if you, if you think a minute about it, you will see that, uh, that uh, eventually that all the minima will be filled. And from a certain point on, what is going to happen is just a uh, uh, having a flat surface which grows and grows and grows. And so if you uh, think for a second, then you see that this, if you look at the, if you, when you reach this asymptotic limit, the bias that you have added is within a constant which uh, for free energy is irrelevant, uh, uh, is equal to minus of the free energy. And this is a crucial, a crucial, a crucial observation. So, in principle, if you have the right collective variable, if I don't think properly, then I can, I can, I can get to uh, the free energy. Not only explore all the metastable states, but also obtain the free energy set. Okay, that was uh, 10 years ago. Uh, then, uh, with some of these guys in the audience, uh, we did the new variant, which has uh, which will dis be discussed in detail how it works. It's called well-tempered metadynamics. In well-tempered metadynamics, uh, the Gaussians don't look at the, at, at the formula, but they will be explained to you in much uh, a greater detail. But basically, so the, 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 the magnitude of the Gaussian, the repulsive Gaussian that you had, uh, depends in turn on the history where you are. So if you had visited that place, you should interest it. The more you visit, according to well described law, and you, you find this way of doing it as interesting properties. So it is, uh, the, there is in the theory, there is the parameter gamma, uh, and uh, I mean, we don't have time and that, that 
the people will, will tell you more about this, but uh, we have this parameter gamma. The free energy now, the asymptotic value of the bias uh, is proportional to the free energy through this uh, uh, constant value. And uh, the, the end, so you can look at this uh, like a standard metadynamic as a way of uh, filling, uh, filling the basin in a way which is interesting and I like it very much. Uh, in this approach is that uh, the if you look uh, if you do in the, in, in this uh, uh, well tempered uh, well tempered uh, 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 how you call it well tempered ensemble or well tempered metadynamics uh, if you look at the probability distribution in the well tempered ensemble of the collective variable is uh, related to the true collective uh, uh, probability distribution in the canonical ensemble by this direction. So, suppose you have a caution, if you want to go in the original, in the true Boltzmann ensemble, if you want to get it, uh, what you get uh, in uh, in this well-tempered approach uh, is that you take the one over gamma. So, the larger gamma, the broader becomes your Gaussian. Huh? So, what you do is, and this is, uh, and the more you explore things, uh, so that's what we have forgot to run. <coughs> this movie has been made, prepared by Giovanni, and uh, I, I don't I have the suspicion that uh, by the fact that uh, this guy has uh, mustaches and glasses is not accidental. So in this case, it's it's uh, that's how it is. I mean, the 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 the, the, the you don't go to a flat uh, flat uh, limit, but to uh, to to uh, to a uh, oops to a free energy, which has uh, uh, okay. So this is a, a recap of that. No, you don't want to go over it again, but uh, and, uh, now we see how this view of using this parameter to enhance the fluctuation to work in our favorite case of the alanine dipeptide. So, so let's do gamma equal to one. If gamma is equal to one, we are in the in the standard ensemble. So as I as I anticipated, if I start here. In this minimum, huh, the, the system will never visit the metastable state. But then I can increase gamma, and I can, in a controlled way, uh, in artificial but controlled way, enhance the fluctuations. And you see how my system now begins to visit there. I increase even more. Now that the system, the fluctuations uh, in the system go banana, you can visit also also, this uh, uh, this impervious mountainous uh, region, if gamma equal to infinity, you, you visit everywhere, and that's the limit of all the metadynamics. It is always uh, nice that you have a theory within one limit goes to one case, and the limit goes to the other, and of course, we theoreticians really love this case. Huh? At least I. I'm a physicist, so that's part of my... Huh? Intrinsic upbringing. Okay. The other, the other thing that I want to again, there will not be detail. We're not uh, going to the detail of this. It has to do with uh, an important uh, um, evolution, practical but also theoretical. Uh, uh, Max is also guilty of that. Uh, so, if you, if you bias uh, your collective for the test. So, suppose you bias in the x direction, how about the distribution in the other directions, in the x, y, z, and so on? You, you have distorted everything. Huh? So, if you want to, in principle, if you're uh, naive, huh, you would have to do 1 for x, 1 for y, 1 for z, and you grow old before you know it. Uh, so, what you have to do, so, instead, there is a waiting procedure which is, I find, the elegant, uh, which uh, allows you 
with one simulation in one direction to get to the right distribution for all the other directions. So you need only one metadynamics to run to get information on the distribution of all the possible variables that you can think of. Okay, so that's how it is. And again, Alan is a peptide. Uh, I'm sick of it, but uh, incidentally, incidentally, some chemist uh, told me once uh, that uh, that's not the correct name for this beast, uh, and it's something else which I forgot. I don't know if anybody in the audience knows, but I will write down. But it's it's chemically incorrect uh, to call it alanine the peptide. Uh, so here, what uh, Max has done is to drive the system using only the phi. So this is the two dimensions, that's standard, okay? But we did a, a metadynamic simulation. You see the, the side here, there is no variable. The really, the slow variable is the phi. It's here that you have an important value. So you can phi to go from here to there. Uh, but uh, if you want to know outside the distribution we want to reconstruct, then oh, huh, uh, that's, uh, that's uh, what you do. You start from here and then uh, with the well temper metadynamics and this reweighting and so on and so forth, uh, you find out uh, a bit of the set. So, so since we are doing well temper metadynamics, you know, these mountainous region are not mapped. That's why not. They are not there. But you see, you can get, recognize the main minimum, this and that. So that's a, that's a great thing. And uh, then it can continue. Uh, yeah. With the, you want to look at other variables, so we cannot add a, add a torsional angle. You need, uh, all you wanted to know, huh? if you don't sleep at night to know what the distribution of zeta is, there you go. And as the English says, uh, Bob is your uncle. I never understood where it comes from. I don't know whether the Americans say, Bob, well, see your uncle. It's a no. British distortion. Oh, yeah. yeah, I don't know, but this, this guy, Robert, uh, must be it's very special. <laughs> but you heard this before. Yeah. Okay. So, okay, so I think that's uh, basically of most of the theory. Uh, 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 what's the time? Okay. So, what, of course, this works very well in principle if we have the right collective variable. Uh, but how if we don't know the collective variable? What are we going to do? And this is what uh, many people in my group or my, uh, and all over the world are trying to do because that's the key. Once we have the collective variable, we wish to tackle our problem that's uh, most of our troubles are solved, and, and uh, of course the, the two learning what the, the right collective variable are is like solving the problem. So that's what I say is a self-consistent procedure. Uh, so, so what, I mean, it takes uh, sometimes a very long time. You won't, don't want to do that, although this can be very, very tricky. And so what we can do is combine metadynamics with other sampling methods like parallel tempering and or you can rather than having one single walker huh, you can have different walkers okay, so you dispatch many explorers in your surface and they communicate with each other and then you bring reconstruct the whole surface and of course both parallel tempering and uh, multiple walls are trivially parallelizable because they, these two systems don't need to talk uh, to each other very often. The computer, computer center loves you, love you because you can use many, many processors in an efficient parallel way. Okay. Okay, so let's see if so we few examples of that. We use uh, this kind of uh, tools. Uh, uh, look at uh, one small province here. Uh, you know, what is CPP plus? What does it stand for? Uh, 
Oh, 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 I was uh, in our way of your knowledge, but, uh, okay, so I should, okay, so this, this is a protein which has been experimentally studied by NMR and so on, and uh, the, the, the landscape uh, looks a bit like that, so we have uh, an unfolded state, so these proteins are not very stable, so usually as a combination of different, uh, an equilibrium between different components so that are folded state, that uh, have folded state, and also people have, uh, have speculated that uh, here these two residues can form a salt bridge, uh, the alpha helix can be stabilized by this uh, formation of the salt bridge. Uh, okay. And so, <coughs> what, uh, what we have done it, <coughs> some, uh, some of the uh, culprit, uh, the no culprit of the um, authors of the crime here, uh, Giovanni and Bonomi and so on, uh, we did uh, some, some simulation with parallel tempering, and uh, these are the uh, system, and so we use as a collective coordinate the number of hydrogen bonds. So you count the many hydrogen bonds, of course, the number of, of hydrogen bonds will have, uh, will have its largest number in the situation, and we have the lowest in that situation, so it's a good way of distinguishing between one and the other. But uh, say, what about uh, knowing about, uh, about uh, the other? The degrees of freedom for it, if there is such a salt bridge or not. Okay, so we can do the parallel uh, uh, metadynamics with parallel tempering using the number of hydrogen bonds, and then at the end of the day, without the new calculation, we look for the presence of hydrogen of uh, salt bridge being formed. Okay, and that's uh, the free energy surface. So. We drive the system with the number of hydrogen bonds, and then we look for salt bridges. And we find, yes, there is an unfolded state here. Yes, there is a, 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 an alpha helix in which the salt bridge is stable. And uh, no, this uh, alpha helix is stabilized by the, by the, by the, uh, it's not stable, but it's stabilized by salt bridge. Okay, so that's it. Of course, uh, our customers, as I tell always, uh, the people, they are not our colleagues in the but they are the experimentalists. Huh? That's them we have to please most. It's important to, to make contact with the patient. Oh, using this uh, reweighting, huh? wonderful. We can calculate uh, one quantity that, uh, that, uh, that uh, the experimentalist measure, the so-called J coupling constant, uh, this can be calculated in a fortunate way from the torsional angle uh, by using the equation due to Carplus many years ago. If you do standard metadynamics, because you don't explore all the space, you don't see all the conformation, you find a big error. But uh, if, you, if, you, if you instead you use uh, our, our more sophisticated method, the deviation from the experiment becomes much smaller. Not only that, but if you start uh, from uh, the open con conformation, or you start from the closed conformation, you get more or less. Within the statistical error, the same result. Instead, if you did the same with metadynamics, you start open, you never go close. If you start close, you never go. Open. Oh no, that's go. That's all. But you, you really don't get to the right distribution. Okay. Uh, other example here. So we look at this complex. Now we move from one protein to three. Uh, this is a trimer, which is part of a so called And uh, each monomer has a, a is believed to have this structure, so it's formed by an alpha helix. Uh, no, from an, uh, there is this alpha helix, and uh, 
and the, and the beta sheet. And the monomer is not very stable. In fact, they couldn't measure what is the... No, it's not stable. It, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a misnomer. It doesn't mean it's not stable anyway. It means that NMR, since these things move a lot, cannot, uh, cannot uh, really find uh, the a structure for the monomer. And uh, to, to this... Uh, uh, to stabilize uh, this form, and have to mutate uh, the monomer so as to stabilize this particular form. Uh, we don't need to do that. We, do, uh, we use our tools, and uh, we do this fibrin in, in, in water. We plot our results as a number of native contacts and uh, the radius regulation, which measures how big our, our, our protein is. And we find uh, several minima. One is uh, you see you have uh, the beta and the alpha, and you have other minima. This is uh, one in which beta is stable, but uh, the alpha is unfolded, so it's a partially unfolded situation. And and here we have the unfolded. Then we can put uh, the two together. And uh, see how the dimer is formed, and, and uh, we found uh, this uh, uh, bit of a surprise. Huh? Uh, so when we did the simulation with Alessandro uh, Balducci and Meher, uh, uh, Meher. Uh, 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 it's the first name, but his second name starts here and ends there, and so I can't uh, pronounce it. So we call him Meher. It's not uh, that they, he doesn't have a name. I mean, it's <laughs> okay. So, uh, so uh, we found uh, that uh, if we take uh, this free energy surface, uh, that there are two minima. And uh, where the hell do these two minima come from? And uh, in reality, it comes from the fact that, that uh, by our choice of collective variable, we had uh, we had broken the symmetry between, uh, say, this corner and that corner. And so, if you if you take into account uh, that, then uh, things work beautifully, and you find uh, that uh, indeed uh, you know, symmet the symmetry is restored. So the two equivalent uh, uh, minima. I found also in the simulation, which is something reassuring that some property should be there, is found out by the system automatically. And this we can skip, and also, yeah, we can put everything together. I think we, we should go forward, otherwise, I never finish. Uh, the other bit, which I don't think is going to be covered by other people, uh, is. Uh, uh, a step towards finding not system specific or collective coordinates. So far we have looked at the system, we are trying to see uh, is the hydrogen bond, is the radius of generation, is some contact or the other contact that we have to look at. Uh, let's find the collective coordinates that, I mean, the operator doesn't really have to know about the system. Okay? So, uh, so it would be metadynamics for dummies. Huh? Uh, uh, so uh, I examine two two of these. One is the called path variables, and then the energy. Uh, everything very briefly, just that you have an idea of where we are going and what tools I use as I move along with our example. Okay. So <coughs> suppose there are two minima. In my thing, and the, in the, I mean, in the happy situation, I know where is A and where is B. And if I had a super powerful computer, I could harness a number of trajectories that go from A to B. So this is described here. We go here, there's a transition state, I fall in the other, this makes a bit of wiggle here, then it goes there, and so on. So in this situation, really, the most useful uh, uh, coordinate would be the, this, this line here, 
which is uh, sort of the center of the tube of uh, uh, trajectories that get uh, you from A to B. So if I know A and B, I can use uh, or can look for a path uh, that takes me from here to there and use that as a collective coordinate. Okay, and how do we suppose I have uh, this collective coordinate? So uh, I have this uh, reaction, then I can introduce two variables. Hmm? One is uh, a variable S, which is defined here. I don't look at the mathematics, uh, but it's rather simple. It's implemented in plumed. Uh, this two collective coordinate, which is called S, uh, S and Z. <coughs> and then you start from here. So the coordinate S, so this is your path. Uh, the coordinate S gives the position. If I'm here, uh, then it tells me that uh, the S has this value. If I'm there, S has this value. If I'm in the blue area, S will be one of these blue values. That's one coordinate, so it tells you how, how the system is progressing along the path. And, but also, and equally, if not more important, there is another coordinate which tells me how how distant uh, am I from the path? Uh, and uh, the nice bit is that a simple, uh, simple formula that uh, in an approximate way can, can give you that. Huh? So by Z, with S you move along the path, with Z you move out of the path. And so if it happens that the, your guess from the path was not wrong, the Z coordinate, uh, by looking in other direction, can correct your initial guess guess and lead to the right uh, reference path. And uh, not accidentally, here I have an example taken from our chairman's work when he was in my group. And uh, so in this particular there is a loop which is unfolded and I will show a beautiful movie. Uh, uh, so at the beginning of the path we know that this uh, should fold into an alpha elite. I can make a guess of the trajectory in different ways. Discretize, of course, we are in the computer, so you have intermediate frame, construct yes, construct the z, and do the simulation and study. Okay, uh, so as I said, uh, let's skip, the, we don't have time for that. Oh, we're going very late. Uh, I'm, I've been talking too much. Uh, so this is again the work that uh, Jim did uh, while in my group. We did also in collaboration with Greg Vogt. Um, this is uh, uh, that's, uh, 80, this is uh, the uh, uh, protein, which has a uh, uh, cleft here. And what you hear up there is this famous loop. I will skip the details to show how, how we can uh, huh? This particular corner of a rather complicated uh, and difficult problem can be can be used with this path variable. And so this is again worth taken. Okay, same thing. So now we go for the movie. So we have a nucleotide in the cleft. We have our unfolded loop, and then here there is a, a, a zoom into into the. Uh, the loop. And that's, you see that. So this is, of course, it's not a real trajectory, it's such a, 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 an average of other possible trajectories that you, you see. And then, okay, that's what you, what you find at the end. Okay, so I think we don't have Time to talk about that, I'm afraid, so we skip it. It's a beautiful piece of work, but uh, we don't have uh, time to do that. Uh, so, briefly, and then uh, you can ask a sort of question. Uh, we need for tomorrow this. So, one thing that you can do uh, is to use as a collective variable the potential energy of the system. Any system has a potential energy, so there's nothing specific, that's global. Any system 
I see the energy. You can use what happens. The question is what happens if you use energy as a huh? Is it uh, useful? Is it valuable? Can you can you get advantage out of it? Okay. Okay. So these are the formula uh, that you get. Uh, you have seen this uh, uh, in 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 the, uh, in the beginning, and you have forgotten, but they will be repeated to you over and over. And so uh, you you get uh, you can calculate uh, what the uh, you see the bias potential is uh, related to the free energy. Uh, the free energy, the, the beauty of it is that you can calculate uh, the free energy is done at least formally. In this case, it's related to an enthalpic part, in this case, it's the real enthalpy of the system, the energy system, minus 1 over beta. Uh, this thing, which is clearly of entropic nature, because here you have the n of u, which is called the density of state, which counts for any value of the energy, how many, how many states there are. So it's the integral of that. So this is the number of states in the interval between u and u plus du, and it's called the density of state. And uh, also, it's very nice that you can write down in this case the the, the partition function, which is uh, which is uh, generated by this ensemble, and uh, this given is a function of gamma, and this thing's uh, p of u which is written here, is related to the Boltzmann factor and the density of state that we got uh, the, and if, if you look at, at, uh, at uh, books in statistical mechanics, uh, you see this is a, a rapidly decreasing function, this is a rapidly increasing function, the combination of the two gives a very sharp uh, energy distribution. Uh, and if I have gamma equal to 1, I'm in the a good old canonical ensemble. If gamma is infinity, we get the what uh, so called micro multi canonical ensemble where all the energetic energy state are equally probable. In between, by using gamma, we have learned before that uh, I can take the sharp P of U distribution and broaden it uh, by increasing gamma. And we can do the same here. So and you see that that work, huh? so it doesn't look at the system, it's uh, something that the physicists have and cherish, the living model. We can look at the fluctuations of the energy, in that case, increasing gamma, I increase the fluctuations, and uh, but, so beautifully, the average energy doesn't change considerably. And so this is a real statistical mechanical ensemble because this system will give you the same averages as, as a statistical mechanical ensemble. So, you, you know, the theory of, this, the, of the ensemble, properties of the ensemble in statistical mechanics, the average properties don't depend on the ensemble, but it is the fluctuation that change. So, for instance, if you are in the, in, in the, in the, in the, in the canonical ensemble, the temperature is fixed, but the energy can fluctuate. If you are in the microcanonical ensemble, the energy is fixed, but the temperature can fluctuate, and so on and so forth. So, but the average are the same, whether you do canonical, or microcanonical, grand canonical, whatever. But the same happens here. So this is the property of a bona fide, genuine statistical mechanical ensemble, because the averages are the same, but the fluctuations are different, and in this case, I have a, a knob which I can turn and regulate the fluctuations at, at will. Okay. Uh, so, having said that, why it is this important? It's important for many, many situations, and I think Max will, will discuss with you that, uh, uh, but uh, it's a particularly valuable in combination with the parallel tempering. So, you know all about parallel tempering, so you have a replicas of your system, in this case five replicas, as you move from lower temperature to higher temperature, uh, this 
the, the, the fluctuations increase, so the probability distribution of the energy is more fixed here, it's more bro broader out there, and uh, for the, this is the usual rule for exchanging, uh, uh, making exchanges between one system and the other, and for this exchange to be possible, say for between one and two, it is necessary that there is an overlap here. If there is no overlap, if the two Gaussians, the two distributions are separated, the acceptance ratio will be small. Now, that poses a problem when you go to very large systems, because the uh, large system, the fluctuations decrease, decrease, decrease. So, uh, uh, the, your, 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 uh, your, your bell uh, becomes sharper and sharper, and so to have overlap between different temperatures, you have to increase uh, to increase the number of replicas. Now, we go back to the world temperature ensemble. We have our magic gamma. We can increase the, increase the fluctuations, and so this will allow us to have overlap uh, between systems which are separated in temperature. Uh, so you can reduce much, uh, can reduce a lot the number, the number of replicas. Okay, so in the, then uh, uh, we, this this will be discussed later. Okay, this is for tomorrow, guys. I think uh, I've I've done my duty for today, and uh, thank you for your attention. <laughs>